I've been using version control for something like 100 projects. So this has basically allowed me to make sure that I don't that I don't lose even just one of my projects. You can see I have have them here stored for years and years. As you can see, things about Goddard, things about even other game engines, other personal projects, client projects, etc. So as you can see, I was able to store all this amazing information um, for lots of years. I have been able to track my progress in these different uh, repositories. I was able to take advantage of version control, which I'm going to be talking about in the video. But you may find some videos that are explaining these topics, how to use version control, but it, they just explain in a way that is super difficult for you to understand. So in this one, I want to show you how I do it, the system that I use to make it as simple and as efficient as possible. So first of all, what you will need to do is to look here for GitHub desktop. This is what we're going to be doing. It's an official app from GitHub where we're going to be uploading our repository. So I'll just explain this in a second. So we have here GitHub desktop. So we just basically go over here and download it for, for our operating system. It's a pretty basic and simple installation, so we shouldn't have any problem. And then you're going to be having this program over here. When you open it up, you will probably not understand lots of things, but don't worry, it's easier than you may think. Now, if you have already a Godot project, okay, it doesn't matter. You can still integrate it. I will create just a brand new project for you to, to, to know how it will be also done. But if you already have a project, it's pretty simple. I will just call it here test. Okay. And I will put it here on my downloads. Okay. I will press create and I will give it a second until it loads. So um, there it is. Now, once that you have one thing, a new project or a project that you, you already have, you will go to GitHub desktop. You may need to log in, create an account, whatever you do it. Once again, super simple to do. You go to file, new repository. You just give it a name. You're going to give it a description. You can ch change it later. And here in the path, you go to a path where you have your project. So in this case, it's test and you press select folder. The readme file is basically a file that describes things about your project. So uh, if I go to some projects, some of them, they do have a readme, maybe they even, yes, here you have, it's just some information about the game itself, like some information about the game. This is something personal just for you to have and for anybody who may want you to invite to their repository. So once it's not something very important, at least for this tutorial, you can give it any description, which will be directly displayed over here. This really, okay, what is the game about? What is this project? Uh, but once again, I will just put it, this is a, test description and I will also create the readme file automatically in reality you can then add this file whenever you want but I will just initialize it with it so that you can see what it is about the git ignore super important here you have to look for goaded so you just have to scroll and find goaded you can also uh, press g for example and continue pressing g okay so it's gonna be easier for you to find and once you find it you just select it or press enter on your keyboard the license here, if your project has no license or you don't care about the license of the project, just select none. Then you create the repository and now here it is. What you have to do now is to go to your file explorer. So here it is. And here it is my project. Now, what I want you to do right now is go to view. And um, once again, depending on your operating system, you may need to research a little bit on your own, but it's usually in some kind of view option and show and make sure that you are showing the hidden items. Okay. Why? Because, well, in, inside of the test folder, this is actually the repository. Here we see this .git folder, which is hidden by default. If you don't have this option on, you won't see it. Okay. Because what we actually want to do is to copy these things or actually cut them or move them to the root folder, okay, of your project. So just paste them over there. If you have this message, just replace the files in the destination. Then you can get to delete this folder that you had, which is going to have the, the, the exact same name that you gave it to the uh, GitHub repository, which should be the same as your Godot project. So now that you have this, you can directly hide the the hidden items okay you you don't need to see them anymore so now when we go back to godot okay you will you won't see anything different but when you go to github it will tell you okay you can't find this repository because um you have changed its location you just press press locate 
It is going to actually open this location where your project used to be. So you just select the folder. If you don't find it, once again, you will just have to navigate to your project and just select the folder again. Okay, so let's give it a second until this uh, loads in. And there it is. If for some reason there it doesn't work, what you have to do is to go to File, Add the Local Repository, and here choose and well go to the project folder and press Select Folder. Okay, Add Repository, and there it's gonna be. By the way, also uh, what you can do with this, uh, well, let's do it step by step. You have some changed files. These are basically well because we now have the Godot project, so. Here you have the commit name. The a commit is basically a change that has been made to the project. So in this case, what we have done is to import the Godot project. Some people call it with a very in the past tense, just imported Godot project. What is recommended by GitHub is to call it in a present verb uh, and actually in imperative. So import Godot project. Okay. Then you have to commit these four files. So you can either press this button or press Control Enter to quickly do it. And now, yes, it is committed. If you go to history, you do find it over here. Okay. So there you have version control. So the good thing is that you can come back to these changes if you ever want to. So let's, let's actually see this in a second. So let's say that I'm here in Godot. Okay. And I add a new scene. So let me call it main, for example, something like that. Super simple. So when I go back to GitHub, what is it that I have this new main.tscn, which is this new file over here, this new scene. So I will call this one add main scene. Control enter to commit it, and there it is. Now what happens if I say, oh, I, I don't I want to come back to this commit? You just have to right-click and select revert changes in commit. Okay. So now you have a new commit, okay? Revert import go that project. Okay. So now when we come back here, we don't uh, we shouldn't see like the changes. So actually here, well, the only thing that we have done here was actually adding this to the repository. So as you can see, these objects, these files have been deleted from the repository. Uh, so in reality, I didn't want to revert these changes. What I wanted to revert were the, was the main scene in reality. Um, so in reality, what I will do is to revert this change because I want to revert the revert change, okay? I want to come back to the previous. So now I want these things to be still in the in the repository. But what I want to reverse is adding this main scene. So once again, this main scene is here. Well, also sometimes we will have this thing of, oh, these files have been modified. Here you just select reload from disk. So for example, here we have this file that has been generated again. We don't care about that. So if you go to a main scene and say, oh, I did something here that, did, that I didn't want to do. You can right click, revert changes in commit, give it a second. And now as you can see, our scene is gone. Another way of doing it is that, okay, if you have committed the change, that is the only thing that you can do. But let's say that I create here a new script and I didn't want to create a script. Once again, before coming back to, to, to GitHub, make sure that you have saved your changes so that everything is cool. So let's say, oh, I didn't want to do these things. So what you do is, you can either right click on a specific change and discard it or select everything okay here and discard all changes so now all these changes are gone for example so this is the basics of version control now the other pretty interesting thing that you can do let me now do add the main scene and i will commit this change so add main scene is to publish the repository so what this means is that the repository right now is only available on our local machine so the thing is that, for example, if our PC breaks down, we, we will still lose access to this repository. If we want to access it from another computer, we cannot do it. If we want to collaborate with others or share it with others, we cannot do it. So what you can directly do is to publish it. Okay. Once again, you may be asked to log in in different in GitHub or wherever, just do it. So once again, you just give it the repository a name and a description. You can either keep it private or public. If it is public, anybody would be able to see it. And if it is private, only people who you invite to the repository is going to be able to see it. So once again, this is just your choice. GitHub Enterprise is um, for something a little bit different. So we don't want that, by the way. So let's just select Publish. And to actually view it in the cloud in GitHub, you can go to View on GitHub. 
and here we have it we have our readme file okay we have the description here and we have every single file people can press on code and download the zip and import them on their machine or you can share the access to the repository as well that is for a more advanced usage but in reality it's pretty simple if you just look on google how to share this a, a repository with other people it's gonna be super super simple you would just go to go to the settings and here uh first of all you would have to make this public or um or well in reality you have to add a collaborator because if it is public anybody can download it and do whatever they want so collaborators you have to here give the password and here you just directly have to other people they are going to be sent an email and they will have access to it okay but once again that is for a more advanced usage and i don't want to get too technical uh so that's that's it okay you can see also have a register of all the comments over here the hour in which they were made and the day everything i just have the readme for example so here you can edit it using markdown which is another language but it's pretty simple as you can see with hashtags you put headings then text well you have even more things you can look for a markdown guide if you want to learn more but well, for example this is our test repo this is a test description this is the description of our project we can commit this change we can comment it once again. You have a message, you also have it in the description, but anyway. There you have it. And if you go to a repository, it is over there. Now, what you will see is that when you come back to GitHub, okay, what you have to do is to do a fetch origin, which this means is that there has been changes made on the repository that do not currently exist on our machine. If I super quickly before it fetches automatically, I go to a readme.md and I open it with Notepad or Visual Studio Code or whatever, what we'll see is that I have the previous version of the README, okay? So that is not what we want because we have an unupdated version. So what we have to do is to go back to GitHub Desktop, fetch origin, okay? And as you can see, what we have to do now with fetching, what you do is kind of checking if there are any changes. If there are, what you do is pull origin, which means, okay, yes, we do want to get those external changes let's say and now if we go back to it as you can see we have the new version this is our test repo well it was actually repo but i did it was something that i didn't type correctly yes as you can see so well you can start to see all the advantages that this has once again version control on its own it's pretty it's a pretty complex topic you can do lots of more things you can do branches we we could talk about collaborations we could talk about accessing these projects in other computers and how to collaborate between other people but this was the most important thing lots of people overcomplicate this they start using commands and all that i don't really know to be honest the, the true advantage of using commands maybe you have more control over what is going on but for a basic case it's the best thing to just use github desktop okay um so basically that's okay. I hope that you have enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.